Well, there's very few things that bother me as much as my phone crashing, especially when it's not even sunny out today. It just decided that was long enough. I'm gonna turn this down just a second. Thank you. Um, so we were talking about eyes at 10. Her qualifier was okay, but it was her, her first schooler. It was her first schooler also. You guys saw this play out with uh, Massive Profit also, although she's not as tall and lanky as Massive Profit. Same type of situation could apply here. So we're gonna qualify, I'll qualify eyes at 10 this week and I'll have a better idea of what I think of her after I go with her on uh, on Friday morning. Now my week this week is gonna be busy. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I will be back to qualify on Friday. We talked about Kemp earlier. Kemp was a bull. He was very strong in the face, got away. I put him in with pacers because I knew he could get a little hot and then some guy ended up on the front. I think it was Rod. Ended up on the front, it was, and get over the half and really slow, like 102 in a piece, 132, 103, 102. Uh, Jody had a pacer in behind him, climbing all over him. I was climbing all over Jody. We both uh, popped out around him, getting into the last turn, and he was pacing. I was trotting just about as hard as you could go the whole way down the lane. Unbeatable Kemp was very, very good in his schooler. We'll qualify him next week. As I said a minute ago, Garden State deal will go to the vet. Uh, I don't think she'll qualify. I'm going to want to school her once more. So we'll go to the vet, see what the vet thinks right away. I'm going to say left hind ankle, maybe some roughness in that ankle that we can address. Uh, maybe inject that left hind ankle. I think there also is something up high. Uh, could be maybe her back needs a little adjustment also. Maybe a chiropractor could look at her. These are things that I think we need to address. One, the trigger, which I believe probably is that left hind ankle. Maybe something up higher which has caused some discomfort in other areas. So you have to treat all those other areas up. As I said, this would be a perfect time, I think, for a chiropractor also to come and look at uh, Garden State deal. But we'll endeavor to get her right. I mean, the power and the strength was there. The will to do it was certainly there. She overpowered everybody on Friday. It's just a matter of getting her in her comfort zone. And then I think we can start to see the filly that we have been looking for for a little while now. Uh, so let me see. Blue Bayou Deal was awesome. She was in behind Arches Rainbow. This is a filly, I'm telling you right now, she can absolutely fly. I don't want to pump her tires too much. She'll qualify next week, probably easy, but she's probably sitting on a 56, 57 mile at any point. Yeah, baby. Yeah, we're going right now to eat lunch, babe. Um, so, uh, so far so good. I mean, when you look on both sides of the border, the way Jimmy's coming back, Pete's coming back, the way the Purple Aura's been training, the way that... Um, the way that procrastinator looked the other day. And again, after viewing the blood on Confederate Cruiser, looks like I'm pretty, a lot more optimistic than I was for Confederate Cruiser after his qualifier. I thought after the qualifier, ah, it's gonna be an overnight, now there's a one, now there's a two horse. Uh, might be a little more, maybe so. So again, on both sides of the border, then here you get Unbeatable Kemp who looked awesome, Blue Bayou Dio who's looked awesome. Isa 10 didn't look awesome, but she looked very good. Very serviceable filly. Garden State deal. My hope is she will look good as we start to really get her cleaned up, polished up, and uh, moving in the right direction. Arches Rainbow stole the show from almost everybody, even though she got beat by Blue Bayou deal. I know how good Blue Bayou deal is. I was floored to see how good Arches Rainbow was the other day. Stonebridge Dolce, we never talk about her. She was going a mile and 2 1 at Northfield, made a break in the last turn. Now, it's very important also. The further we went, the more choppy she got. She got a choppy gate to begin with, but it was much more obvious the further we got, which screams feet to me, feet and or knees. So we're gonna have her knees looked at, probably switch her to a set of flip-flops for her qualifier next Thursday. Where were we with the qualifiers with the schoolers? Right here. A Mordiner schooled in 202, last half in 59 seconds. He was very good. He was following LD's Patrick, who was just out for a light jog. 2-2 two -two for him is not heavy work. Uh, I never released a bit from his mouth. He was very strong in both training. And I was interested to see how he'd be going behind the gate on a half because he did act up his last start in Saratoga. Put his nose right on the gate, followed it out of there. He was very quiet, did his work very well. I was very impressed with LD's Patrick again on Thursday in preparation of his Wednesday race. Now that leads us to that race. Miami Valley on Sunday, no free lunch, has got the rail. He's three to one. Brett Miller is gonna drive him in the overnight series there. Uh, not one is a six or 60,000. The trotting side of that goes on Wednesday and we have LD's Patrick, who qualified well, trained well the other day. We have Stay Close, 
Well, I'm telling you, has a lot more to offer. His hobbles were very tight the other day. This horse is going to go a big mile in Miami Valley, I believe. And then Royson's Punch, who raced great. Yes, he finished fourth or fifth, was bottled up in behind. But if I get a clear run, even at a glare I am the other day, I give her a little scare, I think. Uh, uh, Royson's Punch was infinitely better than he was in his first two outings. And then also, Walk on the Moon. Now, obviously, he had a lot of work to do the last seven, eight, nine, ten days. He got it done, qualified well. Now he is very tight and prepped very well for his start at Miami Valley. Also, those five horses will be heading there. There is a sixth horse, and his name's Kings County. He is going to be racing in an overnight race at Miami Valley on Thursday of um, on Thursday of next week. As I said, in Miami Valley, I'm going to stay down there and drive him Thursday afternoon and then came back here. So here's what my week looks like next week. Monday, Tuesday, working with the babies. Monday, Tuesday, working with the babies. Wednesday, I have to be in Miami Valley, which is six and a half hours from our barn in Ontario. Because that's down in southern Ohio. Go down, race the four horses on Wednesday afternoon. Then drive three and a half hours back to Northfield Park because Thursday morning's a big day. We got a uh, procrastinator to requalify. We got a Mordiner to qualify. We get Stonebridge Dolce to qualify. Big morning for us. Right after that, drive three and a half hours back, back to Miami Valley to drive Kings County in the dreaded mud. It looks like it's gonna rain. So I'm gonna race Kings County, probably get some supper and drive straight home to Ontario, get home Thursday around midnight, and then get up Friday morning. We have a ton of qualifiers and schoolers again next week in Ontario. So that's what's going on for me. Um, continuing to train in Ohio, as I said, training great this week was uh, Sweet on Pete and Slim Jimmy. Bomb Hugger is ready at any time we want her to be, so I'm just gonna maybe drop her into neutral for a couple of weeks. And we just want to have her ready. I'm going to tell you right now, I want to have her qualified the last week of April. That's when I'd like to qualify her. Now, that may mean two qualifiers. We qualify her the first, the third week in April, and then towards the end of April, qualify her one more time. If that's what we do, fine. If there's a race for her um, heading into her first start, great. If there's not, then that's fine also. I believe her first start is actually, actually, I have to look again. She's eligible to the Lady Suffolk, I believe, at Freehold Raceway. It's a good start for her, actually. So that's where our first start's going to be with Bomb Hugger. It's actually going to be in the state of New Jersey, not the state of New York. Grace is getting very close. Now, she missed a week, a little sick last week, so she did not go to Mohawk and train this morning. She's probably two weeks away, two and a half, three weeks away. Gemstone Ruby Rose. A lot of people are asking, who's the, who's the Gemstone horse and the Dell horses? Those horses are up on the site now. Gemstone's not. Uh, she'll be up later this weekend, I believe. But for right now, Del Cash and Del Breeze, the Ohio Canyon Wind and Aracash Hanover horses. One's Indiana. Pay very close attention. The Aracash Hanover horse is an Indiana eligible pacer. The Canyon Wind is an Ohio eligible pacer. Those horses are up very affordably priced if somebody wants to play along with us in Ohio and Indiana this year. Um, the one that interests me the most, not shockingly, is the Trotter right now. I can't remember who she's bought. But Gemstone Ruby, Ruby Rose trained well the other day. 2-6 last half and 1-1 one, one last quarter and 29 seconds as she is prepping for her race in uh, her races in Ohio right now. Yes, honey. I know we're going there right now. I was just told that um, they're already at Chuck's waiting for us. I know, Addie Bear. Shush. Um, as also I said, a one-two skip a few is galloping. We'll probably school her next week, I suspect. Put her up on the gate and see. Probably go a mile and two, five, two, six with her. Uh, Purple Aura will be back in full training next, starting next Tuesday. So she'll be more than ready for the first stake race, but she will not be ready for the Hackett. Mario told me that uh, Renegade, even even Addy, stop. That Renegade Gypsy is uh, getting closer and trained at Mohawk this week. Him and World for two. Now, I didn't get the time, but Mario said they both trained very, very good this week. And High Gear No Fear just came back from Mohawk. They said he trained well also with almost Air Boss and Century Invictus. So a good training day today at Mohawk. Now, the other two pieces of uh, two piece two items to talk about, White Tiger and Locatelli, will remain out in the field for another month or so. Um, I may take uh, Matt's MVP home here if 
putting up our shoe on him doesn't work the way we hope this week, which it may not. We are likely going to take Matt's MVP home, take him up to McKee Equine, run a full diagnostic, a full fluoroscope and x-ray barrage on him if we need to, to find out what in the hell is going on with him. He starts out sore right front. He showed a lot of grit and determination, but we can't keep asking him to do that. It's unfair to the horse. So if we don't see a ton of improvement, which I'll be completely honest with everybody, I don't expect to see from a simple window bar on his foot. I don't see that happening. If it does, great. If it does not, I believe we're going to draw the papers on him, bring him home, get him up to McKee Equine and get him looked at, which is perfectly fine, by the way, because he would absolutely maul a maiden at Mohawk right now. And uh, as as I haven't reported this, I am reporting now, Twinby Hebenau is back in Ontario to go to the vet on Monday. Or, sorry, to go to uh, the university to get re-x-rayed. They're going to take out the OCD in his left hind ankle and left hock. They want to make sure there's nothing else festering or looming in those two joints. Um, as of right now, the way it is being explained to me is the way that the left OCD in the left ankle is sitting, it's causing a little bit of discomfort. Once they clean that joint bed up, take that OCD out, he'll be fine again. Two and a half weeks, we'll start back with him. So yes, he's missed a lot of time, a little bit of time. He was ready to go. I was schooling him. You guys remember, he was going to be schooled for the second time in the race bike this time at Northfield Park last week. The day before, he was still a little bit sore. The vet was not was not convinced that it was just the ankle or the hawk, so they wanted to wait a couple more days for the x-ray. I said, don't worry about it. Take him back to Ontario where it's going to be removed anyway. I'll let Natalie, Dr. Natalie Cote, x-ray that hawk and ankle, see what she sees, and then remove those two OCDs, clean up that joint bed. Again, same as horn player, two and a half weeks. As soon as the sutures come out, you can start back jogging. So yes, it's pushback as timeline, but he's such a big horse, you just can't. You have to address these issues when they pop up and they need to be fixed. Get them fixed. I now believe that Twinby Habanero is going to be a nice horse for us. I had my concerns before. He was making breaks and getting rough, but strictly off of the schooler that I saw him in, he was super strong. So I can't wait to get him back in action soon enough. Same for Matt's MVP. Figure out what's going on, fix him up, get him back in action. Um, what else do we got? As I said, Locatelli and White Tiger. And the only last piece of information is we are polishing up, uh, posting our 2022 contracts. They were a little late, but we had a number of things I wanted to have added in to the contracts, mostly to clarify our position and the position of our clients. I was looking at the last item was insurance for our firm, added insurance for our firm. We have so many good horses, what appear to be good horses that were very expensive animals. We really, I'm really trying to look at, is it feasible? I've never carried insurance for the firm. I've never carried insurance in any way for the horses except from when they leave the uh, sales ring. And in the odd case, like Lawmaker, I believe we had him uh, uh, insured as a three-year-old. We just haven't, right? Because it, it turns into, we'll insure this one, we'll insure that one. The next thing you know, you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on insurance that you will, for the most part, never use. I've been in horse racing for since my well, forever and uh, the amount of times I can count where we could have used an insurance you can count on one finger for the most part probably not one hand so um, but when it comes to um, you know taking a look at what we have on the property taking a look at you know what we have to lose and and um, you know accidents do happen we saw it happen at classy lane a few years ago, a couple of decades before that at Mohawk, we don't want to be the next sad story. So uh, we will try and ensure the horses the best we can. Now this will be a blanket coverage is what we're looking at for uh, the firm and for the horses. Um, obviously we're, we're lucky in the sense we have a lot of insurance agents that are clients of ours. Steve is an insurance agent, so is Jeff Ruck. They've been working on something a little more comprehensive for us over the last few months. So that contract was not ready at Christmas time when I would have liked to have it there. It just isn't. So that contract will be done, completed. I've asked them to have it completed by the end of the month. So my understanding and my expectations are that April 1st, we will have the Stables 2022 contract up. It will be easy to, to sign in. It will be up on the site. You'll have to read through it. Click OK that you're, you, you're OK with that the way it is set up so that we can move forward and put all this behind us. So that's the easiest way to do it. We simply can't mail all the contracts out, have you sign them, mail them back. Everybody's too busy to be doing that. This is more of an easy electronic uh, electronic 
click signature type thing and, uh, and it's done with. So that contract should be up on the site by April 1st. Uh, it'll be very easy when you go to sign into the stable.ca, you'll go in, you'll have to read through the contract, click I agree, and then you can enter the stable after that. So that is what, what that's what's been holding this contract up. It's been, uh, we've been trying to look at, is it feasible? Is it something we can look at as far as uh, ensuring the property, ensuring the stable best we can and at least trying to mitigate some of what could be a disaster other than the fact of, of the, the situation itself but what we would lose as a group as partners so um, that's what we're looking at that's where we're at right now as I said I'm very happy very impressed with the way the horses are training just floored with the schoolers this week um, super impressed with procrastinator in Ohio and then at least equally impressed with Arches Rainbow here. The horses we expect to be doing good are doing good right now. I'm getting favorable updates from Three Point Blue Chip and Julie and Andy Miller. They said the horse is coming along excellent right now, so very impressed with that also. The qualifiers this week were impressive. Just everything is going properly right now. It's never gonna be perfect, but it is going properly right now. The two-year-olds, we get lots to talk about with them this week. No, we didn't train, but man, um, as I said, very happy overall with the way things look so far in 2022. So that is a long opening. My phone gave up after 30 minutes, another 16 minutes, lots for you guys to look at, think about, digest, and any questions, please forward them to me. I will talk to you all very, very soon.